And we'll actually just go ahead and get started with some introductions. Um, so I haven't even said who I am um, for any newcomers. I am Leila Vilcorta. I am a program coordinator at TGR Foundation. So I work with juniors and seniors um, on anything related to the college application process. Um, I do work with college students um, just on, um, on their college journeys too. Uh, but I'll go ahead and, and pass it over to my colleague, Betsy, for an introduction as well. Thank you, Layla. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Betsy Pena. I am also a program coordinator for the TTR Foundation, and um, both of us actually do a lot of college access within our areas. So, you know, you might see us if you are in the D.C. area or, you know, in, in the Anaheim area over here on the West Coast, um, maybe through your schools or just different workshops that we offer um, to our communities. And then uh, something else to note is that you know, we are first gen as well. So if you have any sort of questions or concerns and um, anything that you might want to like discuss with us some more, we're always more than happy to um, answer your questions or address those concerns. So don't hesitate to ask questions today. Um, one thing that we want to make sure you all know is that if you do have a question, definitely put it in the chat box and we will do our very best um, to answer answer them at the end of the workshop. So we are not going to forget about them. We will look through our chat box and we'll revisit up to the very first one that's been entered. So uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Layla and she'll actually get us started today. Yes, thank you, Betsy. Um, yeah, just wanted to highlight again, we are on different areas of the country. I'm in DC. Um, Betsy is in Orange County, California. Um, but we both, uh, you know, through this virtual world have been connecting a lot recently and we love to connect with students all across the country too. Um, so we'll actually just jump right in. So again, we are uh, tackling the common application and uh, the coalition applications. Um, something that uh, I think Ms. Ms. Um, Pena and I get a lot is um, just how do I begin? You know, how, where do I start with the common application? We get these questions a lot from our students. Um, and I just wanted to give a quick, um, kind of quick start guide um, for students that are feeling, you know, like they just don't really know where to begin. Um, so a great place to start is definitely with the, um, Obviously, you'll, you know, you'll go onto Common App and you'll start your, your account. Um, and once you start your account, adding your schools, um, adding any schools that you are considering applying to, and uh, you'll add it on the college, uh, on, on your My Colleges tab. Um, and you can actually search colleges through the college search tab on your Common App. And we'll actually kind of show you guys some screenshots of how it'll lo lo look like a little bit later on. Um, but another great tip is um, to obviously, yes, stay organized, um, stay on top of any specific requirements that are um, asked from different schools. Um, so this can be um, different numbers of letters of recommendation from different teachers. Um, some of them do allow counselors or community members um, to write uh, letters of recommendation on your behalf. Um, the schools will have different deadlines. Unfortunately, it's not all just one single deadline. Um, so staying on top of things and staying organized in that sense as well. Um, and then also knowing that the Common App is mobile friendly. So they do have an application that you can download to your phone. Um, and this is going to be really helpful because uh, you can track deadlines, you can set reminders, and it'll show up directly on your phone. Um, a planner or anything like that can also uh, be useful. But as you um, fill out your common application, um, definitely just be thorough in your responses. Always review your answers um, and make sure that you know you, you complete everything. Um, you answer every single question that is relevant to you. Sorry for this background noise. <laughs> um, and then you make sure that you that you hit submit. Um, well, actually, uh, this is a list that's actually on the Common App website of things um, or just materials that you'll want to have handy once you are working on your college application through the Common App. So some things that you want to, to have around is your high school information. So you can search for your high school or if you have the CEE 
B code, um, then you can add it on your Common App through there. Um, you also want to have things um, like details about uh, the school's grading system and things like that. And a lot of the time you can ask your counselor for this information. Um, and there's also a way, and we'll show this a little bit later on, but there's a way to add your counselor directly on your Common App um, so that sometimes they can answer these questions as well. Um, another thing that you want to have is definitely your high school transcript. Um, there is a section on the Common App that asks for your GPA, for any um, classes that you've taken recently, um, and, uh, and you definitely want to have that handy to, to fill it out accurately, right? Um, another thing is your test scores um, and the dates that you've taken those tests. So this can be um, the SAT scores, ACT, any um, SAT subject tests that you've taken, IB, AP tests, um, and the list goes on, right? So you definitely want to have those handy because you can self-report that in your application. Um, some additional items are citizenship information, just making sure that you have your accurate social security number. Um, if you are a permanent resident, then having that green card information and for non-US citizens, um, things like, uh, you know, if you have a visa um, and that sort of information. Um, if you reside in the United States and um, you want to have the accurate um, address information for where you live, um, a lot of the times you can um, opt in for in-state um, tuition and things from your schools um, when you plug in that address information. Um, and then uh, just a couple more items, your parent information on the Common App, they do ask certain questions about your parents, things like their, occup their occupation, um, level of education, um, full name, and things like that. Um, so, you know, just making sure that you ask them that before, you get, before you're getting started. Um, and then list of academic honors. So this can be, um, Anything that you uh, have done during your high school years that was um, a high achievement award or, or great honor. Um, so this can be regional, national um, honors, for example, and we'll actually go into a little bit more detail in this a little bit later on too. And then uh, your list of activities, you know, just anything that you um, have done during your high school years. This can be, you know, as far back as ninth grade, even if you aren't still doing that right now, you can still list it on your common application. All right, so that being said, we are going to do a run through. Um, we did uh, start a practice account on Common App and we pulled a lot, a lot of screenshots for you all to kind of show you um, exactly how the questions look and um, how to fill it out. All right, so this is your dashboard. This is the Common App website and um, we did have a practice account. So, um, so on your account, it won't really show up like this, um, but the dashboard and everything down here will look the same. Um, so on here, we did add two specific colleges, um, just random schools. Uh, we added Pomona College and Williams College. So on your dashboard, um, any colleges that you add from your college search will show up here and some um, some initial information about what that school requires will pop up here on the dashboard so for example williams college they do uh, require the the application itself they do have some additional supplemental questions um, a writing supplement and things like that so this is um, basically the front page of uh, what that website is going to look like Going into the search tab, so this is where you will be searching for your colleges. Um, so you can type it in on this search box here. You can also uh, use the, the filters tab to kind of filter out by region, uh, which schools, um, for example, are test optional and things like that. Um, so, um, so I kind of typed in American and I was searching for American University. So then at that point, you can just click that little, um, blue plus button and then it'll automatically add that school into your dashboard and your college list tabs up here. And if at any point, Betsy, feel free to chime in, um, you know, if I'm missing any information, uh, but we are um, going to go into a little bit more detail into every single section. So um, to get started, uh, the common app tab 
that's up here, this is going to be your actual application and the, um, it's going to be the application that's sent to every single school that you add on your list. So um, in the profile section, this is going to be um, just some demographic information that is asked of you, you know, your name, um, your preferred name, something cool that they added is that you can um, add in your gender pronouns now as well. Um, and some more information like your contact information for sure, making sure that this is accurate is going to be really, really important. Um, so your email, your phone number, your permanent address, um, and if you have a PO box, you can also add that in there as well. Um, you can opt in to add a religion and military status, um, any languages that you speak other than English, you can also add on here. Uh, we did get some questions before about, you know, I took two years of Chinese at school, does that count? Um, it does let you um, type in the, the level of that language. So if it's beginner, intermediate, or if you're proficient, um, usually for proficient, it's about like four plus years. Um, and it's really just up to you if you feel strong in that language. Um, and then there's also that, um, that fee waiver information that will go a little bit more into detail um, very, very soon. All right, um, one thing about the profile section too is, um, that uh, that address for sure, making sure that that is accurate. Um, you can, um, here it says that you can add an alternate address just in case you, you know, you receive mail somewhere else. Um, maybe it's grandma's house because they're always there. So you can add that second address on there as well. Um, some more sections for, um, that will need to be filled out. Um, so geography, um, that language, like I mentioned, that citizenship information will go here. And then on the bottom of that page is the fee waiver application. So we actually did screenshot what that looks like. Um, and I know a lot of you are probably first gen students um, and you do qualify for um, an application fee waiver directly on your common app. So what you want to do is you want to check yes to this beginning question that you have financial circumstances that um, will allow you to qualify for that fee waiver. And then at the bottom there, once you click yes to this question, some of these check uh, checklist items will show up and you want to check off any of the ones that you are eligible for. So say you, um, you receive free and reduced lunch at your school, um, you want to check that off. If you received a fee waiver before for the ACT or SAT, you want to mark that. Um, things like TRIO programs, if you participate in those like Upward Bound um, and Strive for College, um, if your family receives public assistance and so forth. Um, you don't have to check off every single one if you don't qualify for every single one, um, as long as you know you mark off um, one of those um, checklist items, then you will qualify for an application fee waiver through your Common App. And then Layla, can I actually jump in real quick? Yeah, absolutely. So I know that uh, Ms. B actually just introduced the more of like that personal information, so like the contact information, address, one thing that I definitely want to emphasize is that please put down the number that you actually can get reached at. Um, I know that sometimes we put, you know, mom, dad, uncle, aunt, like whoever's number because we don't want these random people calling us or just, you know, these robocalls or whatever, but um, that's not the case in this situation. They, we've had admission officers actually reach out to us because we're listed as um, our student CBO, which we'll get to later, but we're, we're pretty much added on there as a different contact. And they'll tell us like, oh, we've been trying to reach this person for a uh, college interview, or maybe we still need a document from them. So please be sure to use your um, cell phone number um, or whichever number that you can actually get, you know, calls or messages at. Um, and then the other thing too that Ms. V just mentioned as well with the fee waiver is it, I know that for some of us, we might think like, oh, I I'm, I'm, might not qualify. Like, it's always good to just check it out, you know, um, just to see if you do qualify in some way, because like Ms. V said, you don't need to check off all the boxes. You really only need to check off one um, to be eligible. So just kind of check it out. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't, right? So at least you covered all your bases. Um, but I'll go ahead and turn it over back to Ms. V. That's all I wanted to, to mention there. 
Thank you. Yeah, those are great. Um, those are great points. Um, but just to kind of continue going on to so this fee waiver is going to be really important, um, making sure that you sign off on any of those items. Um, at the bottom, you definitely want to make sure that you sign it. Um, and then it will ask you this question. I would like to receive information from Strive for College, and this is for US re residents. Um, so if you want to opt in, if you click yes, um, you will just get some information typically to your email from this organization, Strive for College. Um, they're a great college access um, organization uh, that is, it is a national organization. Um, so you will be getting um, just some information from them about colleges, um, maybe some tips and things like that for, um, for going through your process. All right, so continuing on um, into that family section on the Common App, uh, it will ask you some household information. So things like um, who your parents are, what their marital status is, um, and whom you reside with. Um, and then it'll also ask you if you yourself have children. So you definitely want to mark off that information. Um, with the siblings tab, I do want to highlight that it, it only allows you to add up to five siblings. So if you do have more, um, there is a section that we will get to later on where you can highlight, um, you know, any of that additional um, sibling information. Um, but for the parents and for the siblings, you will have to mark off, um, you know, their, their given name, their age, um, the highest education level that they've received and um, their relationship to you. All right, and then moving on to that um, third section here on the left-hand side, it is the education section. It does ask for a lot of specific information. Um, so you wanna make sure on that top tab up here that you plug in the school's information. So this is your, going to be your high school, um, your secondary school information. So you can always uh, search up your school's name. Um, or you can plug in the actual um, school code and it'll automatically add that um, school in for you. It will ask you information like your graduation date um, and any other schools you've attended. So that's what that tab up here is going to be Add that secondary um, high school on there. Uh, that colleges and universities tab um, is going to look like this when you click on it. So uh, this is for um, in case you've taken any college courses during your high school years. Um, and you can actually add up to three college courses and you can mark off if it was a dual enrollment course with your high school, if it was like a, a summer program or if it was a credit awarded directly by the college. Um, and then it'll ask you for that college's name and when you took those courses and if you earned any sort of degree from that institution. All right. Um, if you, you know, if for any, um, you know, high achievers out there, if you took more than three courses, again, uh, like I said, there is going to be an additional section where you can mark off any um, any of those additional courses you may have taken, and we'll get to that um, very very soon too. All right, but continuing on with this particular section, um, the honors section is going to be um, very, very important too. So here you are going to mark off um, any honors that you received here on the screen. We did mark off principals honor roll and it'll ask you um, how many grade levels um, was that particular honor pertinent to you. Um, so if you received pr principals honor roll every single year, then you'll mark that off. Um, and it'll also ask you what the level of rec recognition is. So if it was awarded to you by your school, um, by your state or, or region, or if it was like a national accredited award. Um, some examples of honors would be things like an athletic award that you received, um, any um, sort of a scholarship award that you received if you're like a scholarship recipient. Um, if you, maybe you presented at a conference one year, um, you can definitely mark that off as an honor too. Anything that you feel, um, you know, was awarded to you directly based off of your, your academics and your merit, um, then you can definitely mark that off on honors. And it actually lets you um, add up to five honors, I believe, on, um, on this section. Um, and then you can also mark off which ones are the most significant to you. Um, so that's what this little arrow 
here is going to be, it allows you to shift which ones um, you want to mark off, off as first, second, third, and so forth. Um, actually, going back a little, um, I want to highlight this community-based organization section. Um, on this section, you will want to add off any um, community organizations that you are a part of where you received help from your, for your college application. So some examples of some largely known community-based organizations, um, here you can mark off um, if you're a part of the Quest Bridge, um, maybe the Posse Scholarship um, or the Posse Organization. I, again, I mentioned Strive for College. If you um, are a participant in that organization, um, any TRIO programs like Upward Bound and things like that, you definitely want to add it in that community-based organization section. Um, and it will ask you for, um, you know, a staff or an advisor or counselor from that organization. So you want to make sure that you have um, that information to fill out. Um, another section is going to be that future plan section that's highlighted here. Um, you know, even if you are not sure exactly right now what you want to, what career you want to go into or what your highest degree is um, that you want to pursue is going to be, um, but you have just an idea, definitely add that on there. Um, it's, you know, it won't kind of impact um, your application. It won't impact if you get into a particular school. They just want to know this information um, so that they can um, maybe send you more information about these fields, about these majors from your school, from their institutions and things like that. All right, and then moving on to that testing section. So here, um, you are able to self-report any test scores that you've received or report any future testing dates um, that you have signed up for. Uh, remember that many schools um, right now because of COVID-19 have moved to a test optional policy. So it is completely up to you if you want to share those scores. Um, you can always mark off no and then you know move on to the additional sections in your application, but for any students that do want to self-report their scores, you, you can click yes to this question to add any, any scores that you want to, um, at that point, uh, add to your application. All right, so for those that do choose to answer yes to this question, um, it will then pop up an additional question to, um, to ask which test scores you want to submit. So this can be ACT, SAT, um, SAT scores, SAT subject tests, AP, IB tests, and so forth. Um, and um, also at that point, uh, the section will pop up for you to add the actual scores that you received on those exams. Um, so if you have uh, past SAT scores, maybe you took it twice already, then you'll add two SAT scores that you want to report on there. Um, I think it allows you to report up to five uh, scores. So, you know, if you've taken it that many times and you want to report up to five, you can do that. Um, or you can choose, you know, one or two, um, or you can also choose uh, not to report again. Um, it will ask you if you took the essay during your exam, and at that point you can answer yes or no. Um, and then it also asks you if you plan on taking the SAT or any of these exams in the future. Um, and you can actually report um, what dates you plan on taking those. So you can report that down here. Um, and again, even if you choose not to report your test scores or if you leave the section blank, you can always opt in to send your scores to um, that particular school even after you have applied. You can always reach out to, um, to an admissions staff at that institution and share your scores with them at that point. Um, College Board does allow you to send, um, to send scores um, to uh, two different institutions even after you have um, submitted your common application. All right, so um, this is the activity section now that we're moving into. And this is what that section is going to look like. 
For activities, you can add up to 10 activities that you have participated in, which is awesome. Um, they will ask you what type of activity it's going to be, and there's a long, long drop down list um, here. Uh, so you can always, um, you know, some examples are up here if you're in an art or music organization, any school clubs, if it's um, a community service organization um, or community service project that you've participated in. Uh, you can also add family responsibilities. So say um, you often babysit for your parents. You can also add that in as an activity. Um, maybe you you mow the lawn for the folks in your in your community, you know, things like that. And then any hobbies or sports or volunteering um, things that you've done before too. Remember that you can add up to 10 for this section. Um, and then you do want to mark off um, any leadership positions that you may have had um, while you were participating in that um, program. Even if you didn't have a leadership position, you can just add, um, type in member for that specific box. Um, and then you want to add the name of the club or organization, and then it does allow you to add a short description. And for this section, I do urge you all to, um, to not be vague with your responsibilities or what that program or organization does. Um, definitely, you know, use all the characters um, in there. It's 150 characters that you can um, add to that space. So, you know, add as much as possible um, in there. Um, yeah, and then at that point, it'll also ask you how long you participated in that activity. Um, if you, um, you know, all the way as far back as ninth grade uh, to 12th grade, and then you can also mark off if you plan to participate in that um, activity after graduation. So, um, for example, up, up here, uh, we wrote in um, the Earlwood Scholar Program, and this is a program where you do get assistance while you're in college. So this student did mark off um, that it is a postgraduate activity as well. Um, and then at that point, it'll also ask you roughly how many hours you spent a week and a year participating in this and if it was um, an all year or just a school school year um, activity. Uh, and then that final question, it asks you if you want to participate in a similar sort of activity in college and you can al always mark yes or no. Um, and again, this is going to be very similar to the honors section. You can actually um, list them in order of this of its significance to you. So maybe um, your most important activity is um, community service. So you mark that as your first one. Um, and I'll just you know show that little arrow right there. You um, you can uh, move it up or down your list um, to to make sure that they they know which one is most important to you. All right. So um, moving on. Uh, we'll go into the writing section. This, I think this is a section that a lot of students, um, you know, they feel like they work very, very hard towards, um, but it's a relatively short section um, compared to um, some of the other ones. So at this point, um, it will ask you um, that first question if you plan on um, submitting a writing, writing um, example to them and you'll just put, I understand, yes, I do want to submit my writing. Um, here, it will show you which schools um, on your list require that writing, um, that, that personal essay. Um, some schools don't require it, so it will also show you some schools um, that don't require it on your list. Uh, but we always say it's best to, to send it even if they don't require it, just so that they can know a little bit more about you. All right, and then at the bottom, it does show you the prompts, um, and then it does give you that space to add in your, your writing sample. Um, we always say that it's best to type it out into another separate document. Don't type it out directly here on the Common App because it's easy to, um, to forget to save your work and things like that. So, um, so it's best to just copy and paste it onto there. And then another great um, little tool is that they do allow you to link it to your Google Drive. So if you use um, Google Docs to write out your essay, then you can always just um, link it there and then it auto it'll automatically upload your entire essay in that section. All right, so um, 
After that, it does ask you for disciplinary history. So um, you will have to uh, report, you know, if you've ever been expelled or suspended from your school, but it does allow you to, um, to write in um, that or explain that situation. And it does ask you, um, you know, what you've learned or what you've reflected on after that experience. Um, so that I think that's a really cool um, section for anyone that has to report any di disciplinary history. And then lastly, that additional information section. So um, due to COVID-19, uh, the common application is allowing students to report um, any, um, you know, any situations that they've been in or just how COVID has affected you and your family. Um, so I definitely, definitely encourage each and every single one of you to fill out this section. We know that in some way, shape or form, we have all been affected. Um, so you can use this section to write out um, any sort of explanation or situation that you want to share here. Um, one question that we have received, uh, knowing that there is this section, um, is that students, uh, you know, some students have decided to add um, or write about COVID in their personal essay. Um, we do say that it's it's best to try to leave um, all of the COVID impacts to this particular section, just because it's it's only you know it's only for how you've been affected um, this year. Um, in your essay, maybe there's something else that you want to highlight that you didn't really have um, space for um, because you decided to write about COVID. Um, so I definitely think that um, it's best to you know if you wrote in your personal essay. Um, anything about COVID to actually um, delete that part and then add it into this section. Um, at that point, you'll have more space in your essay to write about anything else um, that you um, that you that you want to highlight about yourself that maybe hasn't been reflected on your application. Um, so, but it's up to you. You know, it's it's your it's your prerogative um, what area you want to leave um, that COVID impact in. All right. Um, and then it'll also ask you this question, do you wish to provide um, some additional details about any other circumstances that haven't been reflected on your application? Um, at that point, this is what um, that space will look like. And here you can report absolutely anything um, that you know, hasn't already been said in your application. Um, things like, you know, maybe you want to explain a failing grade. Um, maybe you got a C or a D in one year and it, it is shown on your transcript. Um, and maybe you want to write out, you know, that you were going through a tough time with this, um, you know, if you decide to do that, we always want to distinguish um, an excuse with a reason. Um, so an excuse would, you know, be something like, yeah, I just didn't really get along with my teacher. Um, she, uh, she, you know, she didn't want to meet me for office hours. So I just like, I got a failing grade. Um, that is going to be an excuse. A, a good reason will be something like, you know, um, my family was going through something that year. Um, it was really hard for me to balance my grades. Um, you know, I tried my best. I tried to meet my teacher after school every day. I tried to set things up, but it just didn't work. So I ended up um, getting a, um, not the highest grade in that course. You know, that is going to be a, a good reason because it showed that you tried. Um, versus, you know, just not really liking your teacher. Um, some more examples of things that you can add in this section. Um, so say you had more than five siblings, um, you can report their information in that section. Um, one thing that was brought to our attention recently is that some schools are dropping their community service hour requirements. Um, so at that point, you can kind of explain it on, um, on that section. Uh, since it won't, won't reflect in your transcript, they might make note of that. Oh, like this person didn't finish their community service hours. I wonder why they didn't. You definitely want to explain that your school waived it in that section. Um, another thing, you know, if you took more than three college courses um, and you want, to, um, you want to report the other courses that you've taken, you can do that on here. Any additional activities, if you've done more than 10, uh, you can also list those here and, and anything else. Okay, um, so that is the, the Common App tab. Um, that kind of uh, is the, the overview of that tab. So going into the My Colleges tab, um, there is going to be more things uh, for you to, to make note of and to look at 
when uh, working on your Common App, all right? So like we said, we did add two schools onto this practice account. So Pomona College and Williams College show up here on the left-hand side. Looking at Williams College specifically, if you click on the College Information tab here, um, it will, will show you, you know, just all the information that you need to know for that institution. So it'll give you some contact information. If you have some specific questions, maybe you're just, you know, really confused about this one question that they ask, um, you can always just call them or you can email them and they will be more than happy to answer your question. Um, another cool thing is that they are linking um, YouTube channels, uh, Twitters, Instagrams, and things like that so that you can do like, you know, your, your due diligence and um, do a, a well-researched uh, um, overview of this institution. All right, um, they are linking um, things for, like virtual tours uh, for all of the schools and the college website. So I think that that's awesome. This is a new feature. So you guys are getting, you know, the ins and outs. Um, Another thing to make note of is that each school will have a different deadline. So making sure that you uh, that you make note of that, that you add it onto uh, you know a personal calendar or planner, um, and that you send in your application before that date. Um, and then down here, it will show you you know what their testing policy is if they've decided to go test optional for this year, or um, what the uh the application fee is maybe you know you don't um maybe you don't get the fee waiver uh for any reason um then it will show you that that price up here and then you know any recommendations each school is different so some schools might uh require one letter of re recommendation from one teacher and then one counselor letter of re recommendation other schools allow you to to send in more and then other schools also um, allow you to um, have community members write rec letters on your behalf. Um, so for example, Betsy and I, we do write letters of recommendation for scholars that are in our scholarship program, um, but not every school allows us to, to write it. So only certain ones do. So you'll be able to see that information here in the college information tab. Um, all right, so um, if you click on the recommenders and FERPA tab a little bit, um, a little bit under the college information section, this is what will pop up. So basically what FERPA is, um, FERPA is a, um, is you waiving your right to read any, um, any records that are requested from your school. So maybe that's like a, a transcript or um, any letter recommendation that your counselor uploads on your behalf. Um, typically, we say that it's best to just waive that right. Sometimes if a school sees that you didn't, that you forgot to waive your FERPA, then um, you know, they'll, they'll just wonder why you, you didn't do that. Um, so we always say it's best to, to go ahead and just um, waive that. Yeah, I think, Layla, can I go ahead and just say something real quick too? Um, mm -hmm. Just in, in regards to FERPA, this will actually continue on through your college year. So if anybody is familiar with HIPAA, which is kind of like a privacy law for your own personal information, um, but for medical reasons. So FERPA is kind of like that, but in education. So your information is private. And so this release authorization is essentially saying that you are waiving your right to this form of privacy right now. Um, but it'll stay intact once, you know, you start your, your schooling and all information will be specifically for you um, to receive. So just wanted to clarify that a little bit, just because I know that not all of us um, may know what FERPA is exactly. Um, but yes, keep on putting in your questions. I am keeping an eye on them just so everybody is aware. Yeah, I just peek into the chat box and I see some great questions. Um, as we go on, um, some of these questions might be answered, um, but but yeah, to to waive that FERPA right, you just want to click on um, that release authorization form, and then it's just a little box that you check off, um, and then uh, you'll be good to go with that. Um, some other things is that you're you're able to add recommenders, you're able to add a counselor, a teacher, anyone like a community from like a community-based organization. You can add them on this section um, and. You want to make sure that you um, 
that you allow preview. Um, it will ask you if you want that person to preview your application. Um, and typically, you know, um, it's best to do that just so that they, those people can keep you accountable and they can check your progress on your application. All right, so looking at um, that questions tab on the side, uh, here you will see if that school has any um, additional questions for the students that, that choose to apply to their school. Um, sometimes it'll be short answer questions, multiple choice. Sometimes it'll be like a long response. Um, so this uh, school, Williams College, um, they actually made it an optional thing for any student to either answer any of these prompts or they can choose to, to add um, any writing sample that they've done in, in their junior year. Um, so, uh, so yeah, definitely important to, to uh, work on those supplemental questions. Give yourself enough time because sometimes, you know, they are um, just longer winded questions. Um, kind, of, kind of similar to the personal statement essay. So you want to make sure that you have enough time to work on all of those um, before, before the actual deadline. All right, so that's pretty much a general overview of the Common App. There are some additional resources that I did want to highlight. Um, so something new for this year, uh, Common App is implementing a 24-7 AI chatbot um, into their website. Um, it's called Ali. I think that's so cute. Um, and uh, they have actually partnered with two organizations. Um, I believe one of them is um, College Advising Corps. Um, and I forgot the name of the other one, but they're like the tech side. Um, but these, uh, yeah, so with these three organizations, um, they are providing this 24-7 um, chat uh, for students if uh, you have any questions about how to fill things out when you're working on it. Um, it'll also allow you to opt in to receiving text messages um, to get reminders, um, to get tips on how to fill out certain sections. Um, and things like that. So I think that this is a really great resource and hopefully um, when you start your um, your accounts, you'll be able to um, you'll be able to kind of speak with Ollie and get Ollie's help. Um, and then Common App also has a very, very robust YouTube channel that I encourage all of you guys to check out. Um, they have some great videos on how to fill out each section. Um, some great videos on um, that just give you tips on on uh, tackling the personal statement, on tackling the activity section, and things like that. Um, and then, lastly, they also have a lot of great resources, so PDFs and articles directly on their website that anyone can access. Um, so, um, so I definitely encourage you guys to also check that part out. All right. Um, at that point, that kind of concludes the Common App section. Um, Betsy, how are we doing with time? Do you think five minutes is good for a quick stretch break? Yeah, I mean, I think we're at the 350 mark. So if we can do, let's see, five minutes, two, five. I mean, I think we should be good. I think we should be good if we do a five minute break. So if if you all want to grab, you know, a glass of water, if you would like to do just some stretching or a restroom break, um, we'll meet back here at 3.55. Um, and then... I didn't get that. Could sorry, you try? my watch. Um, we can go ahead and just come back at that time. So 3.55, you're already muted, so you might have walked away by now, but 3.55 is, is the time. Um, so hopefully we'll see you back soon. Uh, my um, my sound isn't sharing, but um, but you can see the timer, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. It is going. I just really love the underwater look of it. It's so calming. It, yes, I, I agree. And the music is calming too. Uh, I kind of wish I could <laughs> share that. <laughs> we can all imagine it. <laughs> I'm really happy though that there are some questions like in the in the chat. So I, I know that once we come back and go through coalition, we'll be able to, um, to get to them. So.
All right, we are reaching that two and a half a minute mark. <laughs> in case you are doing any last stretches or if you can hear me somehow and you're making your way back soon. And then just as a friendly reminder, this is being recorded. So in case you need to step out a little earlier, then um, just know that this will be made available as well. So, Missy, I don't know if you saw this question real quick about the recording, but if I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but we do have them being uploaded to um, like our YouTube channel. Yes, um, yes, Miss P. I believe they're they're going to be um, uploaded on YouTube channel uh, for the YouTube. It will take um, it might take a little bit longer um, to be uploaded, but for, um, like any CBA students, for example, that will be uploaded onto like the Google drives as well. Um, but I think the best, um, in terms of access for everyone will be our YouTube. Awesome. So hopefully Jessica, that answers, um, your question. We can also see how we can share out, um, our TGR, uh, foundation YouTube channel link. And maybe I can add it into our chat box by the end of today. So, um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and find the link or Miss B, if you can actually, actually, no, I'll do it. I'll go ahead and do that. Um, but as we're making our way back uh, to our seats, I know that we are at the 355, it's not 356 mark. So we are getting close to this end of countdown. Um, so make sure that you are coming back to your seats or if you're sitting on your bed or at the kitchen table, wherever you may be, um, just kind of settling in once again. Um, and this second part of our uh, webinar today will be a little bit shorter just because we are um, focusing on the, on the coalition application. Um, and I'm actually going to be reviewing more of the differences. Um, yes, we are going to make this shareable. So definitely going to be something that we can share out um, with, with other students or other groups. So Ms. V, if we can, we can go ahead and, and start our coalition um, app portion of, of today. So just as, as a friendly reminder, I mean, I know that maybe some of us have heard the name, maybe we've seen, you know, like the lettering, the writing, um, but just to kind of give like a brief description of um, my coalition, um, it is similar to the Common App in the sense that it is a portal that um, over 150 colleges and universities uh, use uh, to have their applications on there for students to apply through. Um, but just to kind of keep in mind is if you are applying to a school that is both on the Common App and the Coalition application, you will only be filling out one of those. So you don't have to fill out the application twice. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind and see what you prefer to apply through uh, once you've kind of seen both portals. Um, so just something to kind of keep in mind as well with my coalition is that they have specifically really picked the schools that are a part of their portal. Um, it's really about like access and affordability. Um, so they really make sure that they are having schools on there that provide maybe high quality type of financial aid packages. Um, so this is, they have a certain requirements that they would like their schools to meet before they're added to their portal. So if that kind of helps um, with your decision making or just a different way to kind of create that college list that Ms. V had mentioned earlier, um, that this is kind of a good place to start as well. Um, and then just also trying to keep in mind that by accessibility, they also talk about not just about financial aid, but maybe how many of their students graduate within the four year span or maybe their retention rates. So that might be something else that you would like to look at um, through these uh, portals. 
Uh, and then kind of moving on to a little bit more of what the difference between the college app, I mean not the college app, the common app and the coalition application is something called the locker. Um, this is pretty unique. I know that this is something that, I mean, I didn't have personally, you know, the, the experience with, but after learning about it, I think it's a very great tool um, for you to have as a student. It's actually completely free and it's an unlimited digital storage space for you. So as a student, you know, you really are able to start this at a younger age. So say that you might not be a rising senior, um, maybe you're not a junior or senior this year, maybe you're joining us as a freshman or as a sophomore, and um, this is something that you're able to do. So you're able to go ahead and actually store any type, well, most documents. So you can really share, you can store photos, you can store videos, Word docs, uh, PDFs, sound files, and this locker itself, this digital store space is completely private to you. So you're really able to keep um, all this information in your own space, but at the same time, if you wish to share it, um, if you wish to share parts of it, uh, maybe with your counselor, or with a teacher, or maybe the person who is helping you fill out your, your college applications, um, you're able to do that. Um, with with whichever material you want to share that with. Um, so it's also really helpful too if you are maybe thinking about applying to an internship or um, any sort of like program or scholarship or maybe a job because you have so much stored on here that you are able to maybe create a resume a little bit quicker. You have a portfolio ready if you are into more of like the arts. Um, so just kind of keeping that in mind that's that's also like a very useful tool for you to have and just to kind of take advantage of. Um, and it might also give you a way to display um, some of your work through your application that you might not be able to on other uh, portals. And I know that for us, you know, we might have our phones on us more often than maybe a tablet or, um, or being like at, a, at a desktop. So this is also their portal is actually very um, mobile friendly. So you're able to go ahead and, you know, log on through your phone, through their, you know, um, portal there. And you can really access the documents that you have on your locker from any device because it is um, a, a cloud-based storage. So you can have access to it wherever you're at, wherever you're at, as long as you have internet access on that device, you are set. Um, so. If anybody has any questions just regarding the locker, I know it's a little bit newer, so feel free to go ahead and ask anything in the chat. Um, and then something that is similar to the common application, but it has a little bit of a different twist to it, is their college list. Um, so the really neat thing about the college list and something that Ms. B pointed out to me, which I also found really awesome is that you can look for schools on there that are outside of that coalition application network. So if they're not affiliated with my coalition and you can still look for them through their portal and um, opt in to get information on them, um, whether it's, you know, newsletters or maybe uh, messages that you get from the admissions office. Um, and you can do that with the schools that you add to your college list as well that are uh, my coalition app affiliated. So I think that's like a very great way to one, keep organized and two, just to get more information and stay up to date, especially right now with, you know, I know that we've talked a lot about COVID-19 and how that has impacted just different parts of the college application process. But, you know, trying to keep in mind that schools are maybe changing deadlines or you know, I know that a lot of our schools, um, our colleges and universities have been becoming even more friendly with like test optional uh, ways of, of applying. So just kind of keeping that in mind for any updates or anything like that, you can just get more information, um, especially if you're thinking about maybe a college that is still offering virtual college interviews. That could be a great way to um, make sure that you can secure one if that is something that you're interested in. Um, so just kind of keeping that in mind with the college list. And on top of that, if you don't have a college list already, you know, say like on a Google Doc, I know that a lot of our students always have something on a Google Doc um, or on a Word Doc. Maybe this is also a really great way to start. 
Um, and then that way you can go ahead and maybe transfer some of these schools to a Google Doc if you're still really working out which ones you want to apply to. Um, and I, I think I mentioned this before, but Ms. V, if I'm missing anything, feel free um, to jump in and let me know if, if maybe I missed anything. Um, so just kind of going through that of, of the college list. And then I did want to go ahead and just go into a little bit more of maybe some different resources or um, the different parts about the coalition application that is also similar to the Common App, but maybe different in certain ways. Um, so Ms. I, Ms. P, yeah. if I can just jump in before we go mm -hmm. into um, the additional resources, I also wanted to point out that um, for both the locker and uh, for the college list, you are able to share anything that you for the locker, you can share anything that you upload onto your locker. So um, it is private to you. It's automatically just a private feature. But if you choose to share like an essay, for example, or maybe you upload like a photo or video, you can choose people that you share it with. Um, maybe you want a teacher to look over an essay, or maybe you want to share like a photo or video with like a, an athletic coach or things like that, then um, you can do that here. Um, and that share button. And then with the college list too, you can share your list of colleges that you, um, that you know, you, you finalize on your coalition um, and you can add anyone on there as well. Um, so I just wanted to point that out um, before, before we move on to that next slide. Let's see, I'll, I'll pass it back over to you. Thank you, Ms. Fee. Yes. So, I mean, I think that's also a really important piece though that you just emphasize is just making sure that you are sharing that with, you know, your, maybe you're working with a CBO, a community-based organization, or maybe you're a part of a TRIO program and they're helping you with your college list or your counselor. So um, it also just makes it very easy. That way you don't have to create a whole nother document for them and for you. So going further into just the different components of the uh, coalition application, is first there is a fee waiver available um, that you could possibly be eligible for as well. So similar to the Common App, um, there are different ways that you can qualify. So as we had mentioned, if you participate in, or if you have participated in the past in federal free or reduced lunch, um, if you've participated in TRIO programs, and TRIO programs could be a little bit more broad depending on where you're at in the country um, but something that, that is kind of familiar to us here is like Upward Bound or Gear Up. Um, those are just kind of sample programs. There could be other programs that qualify as well. So just kind of keeping that in mind. Um, in addition to that, if you've received a fee waiver from College Board, um, you know, for your SATs, you would qualify as well. Or if you have done your FAFSA already, um, you will see that, you will see if you are eligible for a Pell Grant, and if so, that's how you can also qualify for a fee waiver through the coalition application. Um, so just kind of marking that out, because the application does average out to about $40 um, per application for the coalition app. So if you can save that money, even better, um, definitely make sure that you are finding ways um, to, to save. So just wanting to put that out there. And then the other feature that we talk about too is um, score send. So this is actually very convenient. I, when I saw this, I was like, oh my goodness, like this, this is always something that I think our students kind of struggle with um, because it's also like you have to maneuver through or navigate through that college board website to send your scores. So, my coalition is actually, um, they're, you're actually able to link your College Board account to your My Coalition account. So that way, um, schools can actually match your application with your test scores that way, instead of having to figure out codes. And it's like this whole other set of windows that you have to keep open. Um, so definitely, uh, is, it's a really great way to, to just kind of get that out of the way for yourself. Um, and then, Another way too is that my coalition actually provides a way for you to request um, different official documents. So aside from official test scores, official documents, they really talk about 
um, for example, like the letters of recommendations from, you know, your teachers or counselors right from the locker. So almost similar to the Common App where you have to go into the recommenders and all that, you know, that, that specific area for my coalition, it'll be more in it through your locker and just having that ability to, to still find ways for your documents to just get automatically uploaded into your application. So it's just another level of convenience for you to not have to um, worry about, you know, having to do that yourself. Um, and also, again, you are releasing that, that right, you know, like a, a FERPA. So just kind of making sure that you remember um, that key marker in your, in your application for that section when it comes to recommendations. Um, and another portion of it too that Ms. V definitely touched upon with the Common App in the way that if you have specific, you know, struggles or hurdles or difficulties that were brought on by COVID-19, like definitely taking the time to explore those on your application and letting that be known in, in that designated spot. Obviously, if you have maybe a topic that you are writing about for your personal statement and, and that's maybe something of a little bit of a, a more of a bigger picture and you don't want to lose that, then you can keep it there if that's where you're including that impact. But if you feel that you have another, you know, kind of topic or idea that you may want to write about, um, then you can maybe designate that COVID-19 related um, experience or situation to that additional information section. Um, so I know that a lot of portals are giving students a specific section to talk about that. Um, so just kind of keeping that in mind and making sure that you really are reflecting on, on maybe what are like the challenges that you've had to face these past couple months. Um, not just you, but maybe as a family, like it, I know that a lot of our families have, you know, gone through a lot of um, changes in employment, you know, so that affects everyone. Um, so just wanting to put that out there and keeping that in mind for, for all of us. Um, and then I know that they don't have Ollie, <laughs> like the Common App, but they do have my coalition counselor. and. It's a little bit similar to them having like that frequently asked questions. Um, they have a section for you to just look at different, like be able to read different articles um, about like the college application, you know, through the My Coalition app portal um, and maybe how to approach uh, your college research and how to find different colleges on that portal. Um, if you are having like a tech difficulty, like a, you know, technology or technical, like whenever it is that you're filling it out, you can actually, um, you can go ahead and, and start something called like a ticket. So if you go ahead and it's almost as if you're reaching out to customer service in a way, and you start your ticket, you put your name, you link up your email on there and you type out your, the poem that you're having, and then they'll respond to that. So once that's submitted to them, they'll go ahead and reach out to you to your direct email. Um, with that ticket number and it's kind of just like an ongoing thread for that same problem that you're having if you're having to go back and forth with them. So just wanting to keep that in mind. Um, so, you know, as we're kind of going through the different parts of my coalition app, it's some of them seem very similar, um, but you know, there are definitely some things on my coalition that makes it stand out and I did receive some information that they would be getting even more tools on there um, and more resources for all students. So ninth through 12th grade. Um, so we'll definitely see maybe how we can share that out. Or if you are interested, um, definitely just keep up with their website. I know that they have different newsletters that, you know, both as educators, but also as students that you can sign up for. So just kind of staying in the know about it. Um, because they are specifically releasing tools for, um, to help students through, through this new change <laughs> induced by COVID-19. So, um, you know, with that, I just wanted to really wrap it up. I'm not sure, Ms. V, if you had anything in terms of my coalition that you wanted to mention before we get to Q&A. No, I didn't have anything to add. Okay. okay. So I guess it's our favorite.